We are here this afternoon to announce uh, the uh, shutting down of uh, one of the biggest um, and most organized threats to the safety of the Central Valley, and that is the um, Magana Drug Trafficking Organization. I want to start by thanking the leaders uh, in the Central Valley of law enforcement. I travel up and down the state, and um, the work that is happening in this region is some of the best in our state um, in the face of some of the biggest challenges. And so I want to specifically thank Tulare County District Attorney Tim Ward, uh, Tulare County Acting Sheriff Mike Boudreau, uh, Fresno County Sheriff Margaret Mims, who is here in spirit, and um, Kings County Sheriff David Robinson. Uh, they do exceptional work and they have been great partners with the California Department of Justice on this and many other cases. Um, I'm happy to be back here. The first zone meeting that we did um, in California was, was in Tulare County in April of 2011. And in fact, coming out of that meeting, um, I had many conversations with the leaders here and, and including Sheriff Mims about the need for uh, additional support to the work that was happening in this region and specifically to the work that needed to be done in Tulare County. And it was a result of that meeting back in 2011 um, that I decided to create a task force that would be supported with DOJ resources in Tulare County. And, um, and that work was done. We called it, and we still call it, the Tulare County Agency's Regional Gang Enforcement Team, also known as TARGET. And um, Target is responsible for doing a lot of important work, not only as it relates to this case, but, but many others. So uh, it's important to recognize that what you see here are law enforcement leaders who each have a specific jurisdiction in which they work, a specific jurisdiction that they have taken a vow of responsibility for in terms of public safety. But we're here together because we're acutely aware that the way criminals do their work is not to abide by or respect or even concern themselves with those jurisdictional boundaries. And this is a perfect example, this case, of just that kind of activity where they work across jurisdictional boundaries that relate to cities, that relate to counties, that relate to the state of California, and frankly that relate to, to our country, the United States of America. This case is an example of an organized criminal association that worked across city, county, state, and international borders, and in particular, did a lot of their activity between Mexico and California. California, when we look at what's going on in our state, I can tell you we're wonderful, the best state in the United States of America, as far as I'm concerned. We are also, for so many of the reasons that make us great, a target, an attractive target for organized criminal um, associations for what we call transnational criminal organizations. They know, as do many, that California has the largest population of people of any state in the country. They know that we also have the largest number of consumers who, for the most part, consume legal products, but sometimes illegal products. And so it makes for a very rich target. Um, I was just down in Mexico about three weeks ago um, Mexico City, where I led a group of attorneys general from the United States to meet with our counterparts in Mexico, with the Mexican attorneys general, and in fact the attorney general for the country of Mexico. And a large part of the conversation is what needs to happen between our country and Mexico with law enforcement leaders working together to put our work and our intelligence and our resources into collaboration around the issue of the trafficking of drugs as well as guns and human beings. One of the issues that we know that was also unveiled in a report that my office published last year on transnational crime in the state of California is that 70 percent of the methamphetamine that is trafficked from Mexico into the United States is trafficked through San Diego, California. What we found in the analysis that we did in preparing the report is that increasingly transnational organizations are involved in sophisticated money laundering. There is evidence of that in this case. What we know is that they are engaged in witness intimidation. They are engaged in doing their work at lethal proportions, whatever they need to do to make their money, including killing people. But it is 
entirely, for the most part, a, 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 an enterprise that is motivated by profit, which is that they are making a lot of money doing the work of, in this case, trafficking narcotics, and in particular, methamphetamine and cocaine. So let me talk a little bit about this case as an example of just that point and the challenges that we face in California. Um, so the uh, Magana uh, uh, Drug Trafficking Organization um, was brought to, to justice and over the course of a six-month investigation that was a collaboration among many of the law enforcement leaders here and others, including our federal um, law enforcement partners. Um, in particular, in the summer of 2013, the Central Valley Marijuana Investigation Team, which is a California Department of Justice task force, began investigating Jose Magana for the cultivation and distribution of marijuana. Uh, in November of 2013, Kings County uh, Gang Task Force and the Task Force of Central Valley Marijuana Investigation Team learned that Magana had been supplying ice and methamphetamine to the Nuestra Familia in Central Valley, and they are a well-known and well-organized uh, criminal street gang, and, um, and with ties to also prison gangs, and, and they do their operations both on the street and in the prisons. And they are well-known to be directly tied to, the, um, to cartels out of Mexico, um, and in particular the La Familia um, Michoacana that is doing a lot of uh, very uh, bad work in Mexico and has been collaborating with a lot of the California street gangs. So what we know is that over the course of this investigation, um, they were involved in trafficking large amounts of narcotics. In November of uh, 2013, our agents um, arrested one suspect who was a runner, essentially, who was um, driving a car for the drug trafficking organization. And we during the course of that arrest, seized 25 pounds of ice in Tulare County. Our investiga um, investigation and the agents also identified several out-of-state customers and runners for this organization. In January of 2014, local authorities in Arkansas intercepted $25,000 that Magana was attempting to send from Arkansas here to California. In February of 2014, Arkansas DEA agents arrested two runners for the drug trafficking organization in Arkansas and seized 21 pounds of methamphetamine and $45,000. Philadelphia DEA agents seized $113,000 from a Magana customer and in that process identified a money structuring scheme wherein Magana would deposit proceeds from his illegal activity into multiple bank accounts under different names in an attempt to launder the money. The investigation culminated in March of 2013 uh, when the, uh, our task force along with the Tulare County Sheriff's SWAT team and Target arrested seven suspects including Magana himself. Uh, this operation took place uh, between Tulare and Riverside counties, and in the process, we seized 10 pounds of ice, 4 kilos of cocaine, <clears throat> and $30,000. And the final suspect in this operation uh, was arrested in March in Tulare County. In all, 11 suspects have been arrested, 56 pounds of methamphetamine has been seized, 4 kilos of cocaine, 942 marijuana plants, and 268,755 U.S. dollars. All were seized. Um, in a moment, you're going to hear from the great Tim Moore, the district attorney of, of Tulare County, and he'll talk about um, the charges that he is prosecuting as a result of this collaboration and investigation, which include three counts of conspiracy to transport a controlled substance, three counts of possession for sale of a controlled substance, three counts of selling or transporting a controlled substance, and one count of a prohibited person in possession of ammunition. The work that happened here is a collaboration between 14 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Uh, it is the work of the Central Valley Task Force, of Target, and of Special Operations Units. It is on the federal level a function of the collaboration 
from the DEA and the United States Attorney's Office, as well as the Department of Homeland Security and the United States Forestry Service. On a local level, it is Tulare County Sheriff's Department, Tulare County District Attorney's Office, Kings County Gang Task Force, and the Fresno County Sheriff's Office. And it is a clear example of something that we have um, outlined in the report that we issued through the, through the uh, Department of Justice, through the California Department of Justice. The way that these folks operate, these criminals, is they operate across jurisdictional boundaries. What we are also seeing increasingly is that they are willing to form alliances among themselves at a local, a state, and international level. What we are seeing is that they are doing the work of increasingly collaborating across, in particular, the border between California and Mexico. In fact, we have seen an increase of 316 percent of methamphetamine seizures at the California-Mexico border from 2009 to 2013. 2009 in kilos, we seized 1,980. In 2013, in kilos, we seized 6,256. So it is not a big surprise that you see what you see here, because there is a lot of product that they are manufacturing in Mexico and then sending up across the border into California, straight up the I-5. One of the reasons the attorneys general from various states, including Florida and others, joined me in Mexico for that meeting, is that they are well aware what comes through California quickly goes to the rest of the country. And in fact, the diagram to my left points that out, where the red lines you'll see um, indicate the movement of the product to the East Coast and, and Southern states. And then the yellow lines, as you'll see, head back West. And that's the money that is collected from the purchase of, this, of these illegal narcotics that comes back into California and then goes back to Mexico. Um, so I'm going to close my comments by, by pointing out something that, that must be acknowledged. The collaboration among these various law enforcement agencies uh, happens because there is a lot of work that, puts, that, that we have dedicated ourselves to putting into this. The work that resulted in this case took place over 10 months. It involved 10 separate special operation units. It involved 875 man hours. The work that you see today, which is about public safety for California, is accomplished by men and women of law enforcement putting a whole lot of time and effort into making this happen. And in order for that work to continue, in order for us to meet the challenges to the public safety of California, in order for us to make sure that people who are committing crimes in our state that threaten the safety of our communities, in order to make sure that work happens, local law enforcement must be supported and must be supported with resources and must be supported in terms of giving us the tools that are necessary to do this kind of work. And that means sustained funding. Each of these law enforcement leaders at one time or another very soon in this season are going to have to go to their boards of supervisors and others to talk about the resources that are necessary. For the California Department of Justice, we are going to Sacramento to talk about what is necessary to do this work. It does not just happen by itself. And unfortunately, it doesn't just happen because we want it to happen. It happens when we have the resources to do the job, the job that we take seriously. And so when we look at the fact that the California Department of Justice took a $71 million hit in 2011, we should all be concerned about that. We should be concerned that law enforcement at a state level needs the support to then support the local law enforcement leaders, such as those who are here with me today. And so, in particular, we're going to be going to Sacramento, and I will be talking with the legislature and the governor about the need to bring in to the California Department of Justice $7.5 million as a starting point to support five additional 
special operation units in addition to those that are currently doing the work they're doing. And this, by the way, will not be sufficient to meet the challenges but it will be a good start. And um, so I'm gonna close by, by saying again that I thank the leaders that we have today. They do their work under great, um, with great sacrifice and with great challenges, um, but they're the best, the best that there is out there. So with that, I wanna introduce Tulare County District Attorney, Tim Ward. Tim. Good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the men and women that comprise the uh, Office of District Attorney in Tulare County, and the citizens of uh, our great county. I want to extend my appreciation and gratitude for Attorney General Harris and her professional staff and the commitment that they've made uh, to keeping uh, our communities in South County safe. Uh, as a prosecutor, uh, I've seen time and time again uh, the impact that uh, charging a, a narcotics offender has uh, on public safety, but I can tell you from experience uh, the task force collaboration that we see uh, brought to bear today not only has an impact on justice for the defendants that are charged here today, uh, but it will have a lingering impact on the public safety aspect and the safety of our communities in uh, uh, Tulare County. And for that, uh, I'm thankful for, uh, uh, for your help, uh, the men and women of your staff, and the fine men and women of law enforcement that I have the privilege of working uh, with every single day. Uh, from Tulare County standpoint, uh, of the defendants that uh, were mentioned, uh, we have filed charges on collectively nine. Uh, nine defendants are currently pending charges. Uh, the charges do range uh, in uh, various uh, drug transportation uh, and uh, trafficking charges. Uh, those documents are going to be available by our office as a matter of public record for you. Uh, we'll make those available. Uh, the next court date for the majority of the defendants is in uh, mid-May, May 16th. Uh, I want to uh, uh, also commend our law enforcement uh, uh, partners that made this uh, possible working with members of our staff from uh, the very beginning. Uh, it's because of that effort uh, that we stand here today. Um, we, uh, as a result of that, are able to charge uh, these defendants with numerous enhancements based on the quantity of the illegal drugs that they possess. That will uh, increase uh, their potential sentences and have a direct impact to public safety in that regard. Uh, again, I uh, stand here in uh, uh, complete uh, gratitude for uh, the men and women who put the time into this. Uh, we were glad to be a partner uh, along the way. And I'll now turn it over to Tulare County Sheriff Mike Boudreau. Well, good afternoon. This is a great day. This is one of those for law enforcement puts a big smile on your face. We know that men and women out there working in law enforcement, this is a great day. The drugs you see before you now will not hit our streets and they will not reach our children. That's very important to us. We want to make sure that our communities are safe. And again, my compliments to our Attorney General, who has put so much effort into making sure that law enforcement across the state of California and here locally collaboratively work together. We're not only being tough on crime, but I have to tell you we're being smart on crime. The criminal out there today is smart and they're good at what they do. We have to do things more efficiently and proactively through technology to make sure that we are winning that battle to keep our community safe. Compliments to our Attorney General, compliments to the men and women in law enforcement, and compliments to my friends who stand here behind me. This is a great day for law enforcement. I want to thank the men and women of the Tulare County Sheriff's Department who have worked so effortlessly with multiple man hours into an investigation such as this and all the other agencies that have worked so hard pulling this case together. Um, I just want to thank everyone again and say that we are so appreciative that we are collaboratively working together and the rewards of what you see before you today again will not reach the streets and will not reach our children. So thank you. And at this time, I would like to turn it over to my friend and counterpart, Kings County Sheriff Dave Robinson. Well, good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I just want to, obviously, without being too repetitive, echo the comments. Really, it's the men and women that do the work day in and day out from the Department of Justice, DEA, all the local task forces that get this stuff done. We couldn't stand here if it wasn't for them. So thank you to all of them. 
Um, Kings County is one of the unfortunate sacrifices of the $71 million hit that occurred in 2011. And so we really appreciate the Attorney General's efforts in trying to bring back some funding so that way the smaller agencies like ours can tap into these resources more often. It's instrumental in our community to have these types of cases go down so we can take these criminals off the streets for many, many years and send them to state prison where they belong. The Kings County case, um, which, which um, was part of this case as well, uh, there were 17 firearms seized in addition to what was put out earlier today and also four of those firearms were AR-15s and so you can see the impact that that has when you take those types of weapons off the streets. Uh, 25 pounds of methamphetamine, 17 pounds of marijuana and 34 suspects were arrested in that case and are being prosecuted locally and also at the federal level. And so I just wanted to reiterate everybody's comments and say thanks to all the men and women that do the hard work and a special thanks to the Attorney General for, for the efforts that she's putting forth in the Central Valley. And, and I know all of us stand by her and her efforts to get more funding back to the Department of Justice and we hope that she's successful in that. So thank you. And now uh, Captain Salazar of Visalia Police Department. Well, good afternoon. Here on behalf of Chief of Police Colleen Mestis, we'd just also like to thank Attorney General Harris and her staff at the California Department of Justice, as well as our local Tulare County law enforcement allies and our efforts to uh, combat gang crime and crime in our communities. We are part of the Target Task Force, which is very instrumental in our efforts in, in our local uh, Tulare County area. You know, as we see the table here before us is, is a result of a transnational criminal investigation, but that also has very real local impacts on crime and public safety. And, and while the resources locally are able to address g gangs and other public safety concerns, uh, those ha tend to have short-term effects, and it's through the collaboration with the Department of Justice and our local allies and law enforcement for shared resources, intelligence, and expertise that allows us to have a much longer uh, sustained and more impactful uh, impact against these criminal organizations, which are very structured, as you can see. And so we thank again the Attorney General Harris and uh, her staff for your collaboration and partnership and our efforts to make our communities more safe. Thank you.